Effect. Uh, it's Rob Marenghi. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about the things I do when derealization, depersonalization, and the depression, anxiety that go along with it get particularly bad. Uh, what you can do to <clears throat> maintain. So yesterday I posted a video which has already got a fair bit of traction um, called depersonalization, derealization, dash, you'll be okay. And it's half an hour of me telling my story of how it unfolded over the last three years from suicide to resolving not to suicide. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and in it, I talked about the virtues of getting up at crack of dawn and going jogging and all that sort of stuff. Um, well, yesterday I got up at 4am. Last night I couldn't sleep until 4am, or 5am maybe. So I woke up feeling... One, one thing about derealization, depersonalization, is that you end up blaming everything on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you get a bad night's sleep, <coughs> excuse me, and you think, Oh, my dear, realization's really bad today. Or you might have had exhaustion crewing up over a while and you blame it on the dissociation. But there are other things going on, other factors that um, that make it worse, you know. When you, get, and you remember what it's like to feel bad without the derealization. Although, <laughs> the derealization, it's an absolute bitch. So today I woke up feeling like my head was made of lead. I couldn't breathe properly in the night. Um, I laid around for a little bit and because my new, I'm absolutely determined to maintain this new discipline that I've installed. So I dragged myself up. It was like, well, you know what it's like if you've had the symptoms, like being in a, in a weird, unpleasant cartoon. I even didn't take the shades out because I thought it won't be too sunny today. Blah, 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 for my, for my 10 minute jog. Um, and I, as I was walking there, and I'm going through Valley and Withdrawal as well, uh, weaning off it. As I was walking there, I, <laughs> it was like a, a surreal cartoon, like a surreal bad taste cartoon is the best I can think of. And every step you're kind of thinking, can I keep walking? I feel so bad and tired and weird. And I, there was a woman with a dog and it, it looked like an alien, you know. Uh, again, this sounds very alien to you if, you if you haven't had the symptoms, but imagine just not sleeping for three days and, and dropping a bit of acid or mushrooms or too much weed. Anyway, I did get out for the jog about 11 or something. <laughs> Felt slightly guilty after me recommending to people they get up early and do it. I did it for 10 minutes, if that, listening to some fast music. Tombstone Blues by Bob Dylan. It's a great, great one to start with. Or um, Martian Mothers by Eminem. You know, you you might see me jogging, you might see me walking. That's a great one to motivate you on the way to the jog. I find it's not too upbeat. It's a nice. It builds up gently, <clears throat> but it's intense and it keeps you focused. So I did the jog. Again, felt like I was going to pass out and stuff on <laughs> on the way home, and then I just staggered into the into the shower. I keep talking about my showering habits on here. Anyway, wash your hair and stuff in the hot water, 20 seconds or 30 seconds of cold water until it starts to burn, and then back to the hot water. And I guarantee, no matter how bad you're feeling, no matter how dissociated and depressed and empty and useless and scraped out, you do that and you will find yourself going... <sighs> You know, and it punctures through it at the very least. And when you come out of the shower, or when I come out, I sometimes I I've made a habit of literally going yes. You know, I did it again. I beat the the feeling again. And you, obviously, you don't feel great afterwards, but you feel better. You're guaranteed to feel better. You won't feel worse after a small jog and that shower situation. So I thought today would be a good day to give advice on when it gets extremely bad because right now I feel like my head, <laughs> my, 
my head is about to float off and meet me somewhere in Valhalla. I don't know what's going on, but um, again, though, like the lack of sleep and the coming off the Valium is making the derealization worse. And it's important to understand that it's not all the derealization. So what I'm going to do today, I may ask you a question. If you're feeling particularly dissociated and strange, will lying around doing nothing help with that or your depression? I'll let that question hang in the air. Um, I found that no, even though the, the cruel irony of bad states of mind or depression is that you want to, you're only in the mood to do things that will make it worse. You know, lie around, drink, smoke weed, watch YouTube videos all day. There's a place for all that, but probably not in the morning. All I'm saying that I did have two drags of very mild weed before I went out just to, I don't know. People who use mild weed in small doses will know what I mean. It just takes the edge off the, uh, the brutality of, of certain feelings and that helps. And it can make you more in tune with your body, which is always good. That's why I recommend yoga so highly. Yoga with Adrienne. Again, as I mentioned in my other video that I mentioned, she says stuff like, hello, my lovelies, and grab a blankie now and um, talk to a dog in a, in a very twee way. It's like she's six, but she's great at yoga for all levels as well. And that's why I recommend that now over meditation because it is meditation, but you're doing it's sort of stretching and muscle building and mindfulness combined. So you're not just sat around like you are meditating, which obviously has its place and it can be great. But if you've not done much and you're full of sort of static, yoga is the thing to do because it can be very difficult just to lie there or sit there and meditate if you've been lying around or sitting around all day. <clears throat> so we have to maintain the discipline. You know, whatever, whatever your thing is, um, if you write poetry, write some poetry, even, even for a few minutes, you know, you've still done it. You don't have to, uh, I saw this great interview with a guy who trains elite athletes on the Joe Rogan podcast. I can't remember his name and it won't help because everyone of repute has been on the Joe, <laughs> the Joe Rogan podcast. Anyway, he was saying he advises the top athletes to train to like six or seven out of 10 tiredness or five even, and then stop, uh, which was something I never abided by when I did exercise. I just sort of pushed through and exhausted myself and then didn't want to do it the next day. Yeah. If you, if you just jogging, say you do it until you're about a breath and then stop. And then you can do it every day. Um, you know, moderation with stuff like that. So maintaining the discipline i so I, I got into fashion basically when I started feeling awful inside. I now realize um, I put a lot of thought into how I looked on the outside and it, it does affect your mood. You asked why I wear this stuff, you know, um, a little flash of color in your, in your peripheral vision on yourself. You, you'd be very surprised, you know, if you wore black, all black or you, or you see someone wearing all black, which again, there's a time and place for, but we did some house viewings recently in my house. Um, I don't particularly like two of my housemates to be honest, and there's only three of them. So it's not a good ratio. Anyway, two of them were determined to get an Italian person to move in because they're Italian. And whenever anyone else came to view, maybe I'm misreading malice where it wasn't, but they were wearing all black. And the, I saw the the person react to that, you know, was if, if they were wearing a bright yellow t-shirt and bright blue trousers, say, it gives off a completely different vibe for want of a, a less new age term, you know, paint your room red and you will soon see <laughs> the power of uh, colors. So just little things like that, dressing girls have a lot more freedom in, in that, but guys, you, you could, you know, depending on how metro you want to go, um, it's always something you can do. 
to coordinate or, or look a bit smarter or something. And that really does help with your mood. And you, if you feel like you're dressed well, you kind of want to live up to that. Bob Dylan's guitarist used to say, you only play as well as you dress, which might be pushing it a little bit, but you see footage of his band in the mid sixties and they did not look like they were on the street. You know, they looked like they've been to Carnaby street, which they had. Uh, and it makes, it makes a big, a big difference in how people treat you as well. Um, George Orwell's amazing book, Down and Out in London and Paris, he was saying one of the most striking and first noticeable things about being homeless or appearing homeless was that you became invisible to women. So if you don't think fashion or clothes are powerful, try going dressed out like a homeless person and see how many numbers you can get. <laughs> And then try it in, in a suit or a, just a, a shirt at least, you know. Little things like that will help. So right now, I feel somewhat on edge, very out of it and tired and strange. Um, but I'm not just going to sit around and let that fester and fester on it. Because then it wins. And in this battle, as you know... As with any serious battle, it's you or the opposing force. And you can't, if you want to live, if you want to avoid suicide and avoid destroying everyone close to you, then that battle has to be won by you, okay? Not by the illness, no matter what it is. You know, the stories of prisoners of war in Vietnam who... There's one guy, he, he crashed, he sort of crashed, got shot down, crashed down, and he broke his back, <clears throat> which he didn't realise for years or months. And then he had to walk. He had three types of malaria. Very... <laughs> his ankle was swollen out, like, six inches wide. And he had to do, like, a, a three-week trek through the jungle non-stop. Um, and he was saying, even then, he's, you know, he's chained up in this damp, dirty, horrible, dark, cramped cell with other people. Even then he's doing like leg exercises or foot exercises or with the rats running around him, you know, whatever, whatever you can do. Just, you know, chip away, chip away at life because, and, and once you get some momentum, it becomes a little bit easier each day. And if you say to yourself, I'm absolutely determined, <coughs> excuse me again, maybe not those two drags of weed. If you're actually determined to do something, you can do it. You know, you could, you could not eat. You, you can survive 30 days without food. For example, two days without water. You, you can survive a week without sleep. You can do it. You feel like you can't, but you can do it. So, now I feel like I've... <laughs> Sort of put pressure on myself to practice what I preach, but I think that's a good thing. Because today is, is the worst idea realization has been in a long time. And throughout the jog and the shower and eating, I felt disconnected and in a, a dreamlike state and everything's completely unreal. But a small part of me was very proud of myself, you know, for for keeping up the small but very significant daily things that you have to do. You know, and you, if you have one day off, that becomes two days off, that becomes three days off. Maybe view it in a kind of 95 or even sort of 97 to 100 kind of thing. Like 97 times out of 100 you will do your disciplined activity. You will have the discipline to do your activity and maybe three times allow yourself to let it slide. Like it's New Year's Eve today, I'm meeting my friend in a bit. I might take an extra valiant, you know, because it's New Year's Eve. What a life, eh? <laughs> anyway, I think I'll leave it there. I'm living proof that even when it gets really bad, you can... Right, ask yourself this. You're laid there thinking you can't do something. Are you conscious 
can you walk? Okay. If the answer is yes to both those questions, you can at least go for a walk in the park or do a little bit of yoga or phone a friend or hoover your room. And you, you're going to reap just what you sow, as Lou Reed said. You do that little thing and then you feel better and it becomes easy to do the next little thing. But stagnation, and Nietzsche said degeneration is the thing we fear most of all. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. As tempting as it is to lie around and dwell, that is that is the killer. Anyway, thankfully, life won't leave us alone, and there's <laughs> lots of problems to solve, and lots of things to do, even if it's, you know, just reading. Um, and if you are so bad that you can't, and if, if you're catatonic, and you can't move, there's things you can do. You can, you're not in a Vietnam cell. You know, you, you, if they can do it, you can do it. You can, and you've got this far, you know? You might think, oh, I can't handle it, I can't handle it, but you've handled it. Some of you probably for years. So you, you can do it. You'll be okay. There's, these symptoms aren't dangerous. You know, they're not usually a sign of um, something that's going to kill you or even hurt you. It's just, it's just an unpleasant perception shift. Um, I will leave it there. Have a great day. Maintain the discipline. Don't do it for three days and then let it slide. Maintain, maintain. It's hard, but what isn't hard? Is it, is it easy to sit around all day in bed <clears throat> and dwell on things? Yes, and also no, because it's torture <laughs> to yourself. Is it easy to get up and do loads of stuff? No, but yes, because you'll feel a lot better about yourself after you do it. Anyway, that's me. What to do when derealization, depersonalization gets particularly acute. I'd love any any feedback. Please get in touch in the comments below or message me, Rob Marenghi. Um, on Facebook or through my music pages. My music is available for free. Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Bandcamp. And so it's the music of my band, Cats on the Beach. It's all free. Um, there's probably things you can relate to in it if you're watching this video. And I will leave it there and either do some yoga or hoover my room. You know, carp DM and all that even if you feel like you've just been hit by a truck.